Let's go ahead and hit record. Let's get all our stuff working again. For those of you joining us on YouTube, um, there's a non-zero chance that something Starfield was doing just crashed my SSD. Thankfully, it did not brick my SSD, which is what I thought happened at first. Which is why we just paused for about 40 minutes to address that. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to blitz. No more screwing around. No more playing around. No more trying to do anything else. We're not going to mess with the outposts. We're not going to try and improve the ship. We're not going to try and sit and rant about how bad the game is. Th don't mistake me. This has been, I, I know most of you will disagree, but this has been a surprisingly good stream, I think. We have had so much to discuss and so much to talk about. Uh, woo. Uh. Yeah, no, of course it is. Duh. We have had a great deal to talk about. Um, this has been a fantastic insight into game design and narrative design. But we're gonna just blitz. Because I am at this point actually honestly a little scared. Just gonna be honest with you about that. So, no more screwing around. Let's go. What can I help you with? And yes, the empty nest. Apparently we have 15 quests left after this. Alright, speaking of which, do we have... We have one skill point. We're going to go ahead and put that in this. Still need two more. And your ship that landed not too long ago? Sure is something. Thanks. It was like I spent half my life trying to get out of this place. Yeah, no, exactly. The little Billy and the Magister, exactly. All right. The family has a few different deposit boxes secured in here, so let's look around. Here's a copy of the key. Okay, now remember, Solomon was from an earlier generation. Oh, no. Jacob. Of course, that old mule saw this coming. We need to talk to him, apparently. Yeah, we do. All right. Who's Jacob? Ah, I don't care. Let's 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 just yeah, go. Yeah, you're right. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. Where is Jacob? Where is Jacob? And yes, that's Adam Jensen. Yeah, I'm I'm not impressed with our level pace or uh how much reward we got for doing a huge chunk of side quests and general side content as well as of course all of the primary optional content, all the factional content. We also set up an experience farm which I abandoned immediately because it was substantially less experience than I thought it was going to be. Reliable experience, but really, really, really boring. I imagine most people have been uh, going for that particular thing, specifically because it's something that you can literally leave the machines mining and wander away and watch TV for a bit while you're doing it, right? Well, well. Sam Cole finally decides to darken our doorstep again. You know why I'm here. Oh? What's that? You come to your senses? Realize where you ought to be for once? I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. Okay, this was a mistake. The only mistake I'm seeing here is you. Bringing your constellation lackey here instead of my granddaughter. Come to help Sam loot his ancestry? You're not getting those maps. Full stop. I... Why? 
I got just as much right to those maps as anyone else in this family. That's exactly right, Sam. We all... All right, that's enough. <laughs> in the interest of expedition, or expediting, excuse me, Where's the map? Where's the map? Where's the map? Where's the map? Where's the map of Volkenstein? But where is it, uh, Volkenstein? Wait, is it here? Is it here? Well, well. Sam Cole finally decided. Damn it. Maps in his chest cavity. I can fix that. Those load times are getting worse. We haven't even been doing that much exploring. The load times are getting worse. I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. Okay, this was a mistake. The only mistake I've seen. Jacob's office, huh? That sounds like that's the thing that was upstairs. Come to help Sam loot his answer? Well, you take... Look, one, one more. Just, just one more. I do not give a damn about the fact that your dad sucks, okay? I, I just don't. Your dad sucks. I get it. Ah, shoot. I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. There we go. Maybe? Nope. This is wrong still. Damn it, Croatia. Why would you do this? Why? Come to help Sam loot his aunt? Uh, what? I got just as much right. That's exactly right. All right, that's enough. <laughs> what? Give me a sec. So, I'll go steal them. Okay. That's not bad. Next time you talk to Jacob... Okay, so like, where's the map? Yeah, one marker goes outside. The other marker goes to him. Oh, this is probably the door. What do you want to bet? Yeah, no, because I couldn't interact with this door earlier. Wow. Wow. They made it so you can't... Get... God damn. Are you making an open world game or a visual novel? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's unkind. Visual novels understand player choice better than you. Why are you doing this, Starfield? Why are you so aggressively linear to the point where it doesn't make sense? There's a door right there that I can and should be able to walk into in order to gain the item, in order to get the item, and then prove, get on with my goddamn life. Yeah, that's right. Look, oh, hey, look, I can go in the door now. Oh my God, it's crazy. It's just, it's so crazy that I can outdo this thing that I should have been able to do the moment I stepped in. The door wasn't even interactable. The door wasn't even interactable. 
How do you do that? What designer sits down and thinks, I'm going to go out of my way to make an open world RPG. And then, you know what? I'm just, I, nobody likes open world. Nobody likes having multiple routes through a quest. What players really, really want is for me to inform them of when I am ready for them to get on with my bullcrap. out of my house happy to all right let's see if we can find the empty nest all right let me think the way i heard it the readings he was getting were normal at first then they bottomed out and no creature alien or otherwise would dare step inside there found it oh boy <sighs> that's a problem all right let's handle it well, you ain't wrong. Yeah, blah, First, blah, blah. It's in the middle of the yep, of okay. The empty nest. Oh, no. Well, just remember, it's about the art. Let's get to that cave. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Why are we even standing here? Yeah, we're literally talking about it in front of the guy. In the middle of you distracting him so I could rob him. I'm sorry. I am probably negatively inclined towards this game, but I am aggressively angry about that. Not even making a door interactable until you've hit a mandatory part of the plot trigger. Oster, no joke. That's just... I, I, don't even, I, I don't even have words. I don't even have words for how stupid that is. I'm actually struggling to come up with an analogy for how stupid that is because the first and most obvious analogy I can think of is making a BRPG in which you have a door you can't interact with until you hit a mandatory part of a dialogue trigger. No, I'm I'm sorry. What's the glitch, Junior Thompson? Yeah, it's it is it is insulting. I am giving that a negative. That's stupid. It's our first MSQ positive or negative, by the way. Ah, thank you, Croatia, for your support. Always appreciate. Uh, for Croatia. Um, let me let me figure out what you were donating towards. Yeah, some of you probably don't remember this. Open world games have actually been around for a while, but there are two games, two studios, is, is a better way to phrase this in particular, that have have done a great deal of work in pushing what open-world open, open world games are and defining what open-world games are. Those studios are Rockstar and Bethesda. Siphon, Filter, Omega Strain, Splinter, Cell, Chaos. These are all really long titles. Why don't these all really long titles? Ugh, get out of the way. And Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. Thank you, Croatia. of my way.
Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, let's just try this. No. Confirm. That didn't seem to do much. So let's try the other method. more noticeable. <laughs> Here comes the fun. What? Can, can I help you? Oh, not my day. Oh, sorry, you're an ally. Sorry, y'all look alike to me. Thank you, Baron. Always. <sighs> you know, you're right. GTA 4 has more freedom in this game, and that is pathetic. Kirby Block. Pokemon Violet. Yakuza Kiwami 2. Kirby Block, Pokemon, Soul Silver, Motor 2. Thank you, Little Billy, for the sub. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. The Akaza games are a better example. Of this. You know, one thing I always liked about the RPGs? They were big. Now, hear me out for a second. They were dense, is actually probably a better word. There's lots to do. I used to replay Oblivion and Morrowind. Quite a bit. Because there's so much to do. So many things to do. And I loved that. I loved being able to go and find and be and do and great. It was great. Because there was stuff. There was gameplay. There was story. There was fun. All right. Okay. Yeah. You're fine. Let's get going. Yeah, big is probably the worst word I could use. Oh yeah, by the way, check it out. Does that shout look familiar? Hey, act, before you go, real quick. Does this shout look familiar? Holy shit. I ain't Never getting used to that. Because it's the first one that is straight up copied off of Skyrim. I know that because it's one of the ones I used all the time. Because I didn't actually like the shouts in Skyrim. They sucked. They were too weak for what they offered. And uh, most of them just weren't useful. But there's one I used all the time. The Dash. Me and my buddies used to spelunk in my misspent youth. That's the word, right? Yeah, we, we might just be using this dash for a while. I 
That's actually the first time I've seen it do that little bit. Like. I think that's far enough. Hate to put a hole in the head of Akila's own prodigal son. At least not before we've had a word. You must be Shaw. What I am is disappointed. Samco in the flesh, and he's peddling around the frontier with the has-beens of Constellation. Now you got past my crew, who I pay quite handsomely, I might add. Grabbed something from that weird cave. Probably whatever's been keeping the Ashta away. So, I'm down one hideout. Now, let's talk about what all that's worth to me. Your lives, your credits. One or the other, really. I'm gonna murder your face off. Kill them! What was that? I'm, in fact, I'm quite literally going to melt your face off. So, do me a favor. Enjoy this. Shoot everything. Hi. How does it feel being on fire while I'm pointing a mining laser at your flesh? I'm doing a paper, see? And you're dead. You could surrender. No? Oh, you're not, you're not something that can't surrender, never mind. Yes, please remember, this is for science. How would you say this feels? No, that went great. What are you talking about? Where did her stupid corpse go? Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. I actually forgot. funny. You know, I'm not going to blame random gang lady for not knowing who I am. It is nice when they actually acknowledge it. It's so rare. picked up any kind of frequency or signal coming from it. That doesn't mean much. This thing could be emitting something we can't even detect. As far as we know, we could be building a gigantic bomb that will blow up as soon as we finish it. Or maybe it's some kind of interstellar children's toy. Why would either of those things give the discoverer Vasco, visions and music? We haven't run a deep diagnostic on you in a while, have we? I'm sure of it. I do not know. We just have Sweetie. to hope that finding more of the pieces uh, will give us some clue. I did not I know that. address you. Moving I'm forward sometimes means Vasco, fumbling around in the dark. What you just said? I did not I think Cora and I can use some downtime, but you let me know if you ever want to team up again. Oh, and since it tends to come up, me and my rugrat co-pilot work as a team. That's non-negotiable. If I'm coming with, that means core is on your ship. Sure. Likewise. If you have a moment, I have something I'd like to discuss. As much as I love uncovering new questions, I wouldn't mind if you answer. I'm right behind you. 
precious pumpkin. I must admit, you've surprised me. I thought you were going to take off as soon as you'd gotten something from us. But I was wrong. I want you for a little soiree I'm planning. Okay, what is it? It's about an artifact. And our goal is simple, we're going to purchase it. Our seller is a freelance operative in the city of Neon, which means the artifact is almost certainly stolen from someone. I just need a little more presence in the negotiation to show we're serious. And I think you'd be perfect. Well, we'll see what I think, Colgrim. Give me a second. Let me let me try to neutral myself out a little bit, because I got a headache. And I'm tired and I hate this game. But let me let me neutral it up. Let me, let me take the pain pill. Uh, yes, actually, Mr. Red, that is a record. I believe we're going to hit the record for padding, too. Hi, Jovan. All right. Hang on, actually, give me give me one more second. Give me one more second. Uh, ratio, of course, would mean how many points are positives. Scales of justice. I can tell you that from memory. Quest 64, whose story and gameplay ratios are both 0%. Ah, okay. Okay. I was neutral with Armin Shimmerman. He's awesome. He's a great voice actor. He's got great range. I actually really do very much unironically adore Armin Shimmerman's voice acting. He's one of those guys who you've heard a dozen times and never even realized it. I'm in. Let's do it. That settles it then. We just need to make a few stops when we get to the city, and then the drinks will be on me. Drinks are on you? Hmm. Now I'm certain there's something wrong with you, Walter. It'll be easy, I promise. I'll ride passenger on your ship until we get to Neon. Just let me know when you're ready to set off. I'm ready. To the Volai star system, then. I admit I'm a little excited. All right, to Neon. Okay. I admit I like the aesthetics of Aquila. Let's uh but stay away. I, I think I agree Exile. with you, Junior Thompson. See that shroud covering me on? Believe it or not, you're looking at the only city in the settled systems that powers itself from lightning. Man, smell that? Construction, incense, industrial chemicals of every kind. But they still can't get rid of the odor of chasm bass. It's actually funny, he sounds younger here than he is probably trying for. And that it's, it's, it's just fascinating. I don't know, sorry. We need to stop by the Stroud Eklund offices. There are certain authorization procedures when large funds are being transferred, even for something like this. Oh no, Armin Shimmerman's legit. It's really funny when you look at the beginnings of his Star Trek career. For those of you who don't remember, he played the Treasure Box in the first Loxana Troy episode in Season 1, and one of the first Ferengi ever, where he jumped around like an excited gerbil. It's probably... See that shroud covering me on? Believe it or not, you're looking at the only city in the set... But Shimmerman himself is a legit actor. Seriously, look at his lexicon, or... Uh... His, his list sometime. I sold my sister's ship. Well, with all signs pointing to the Astral Lounge, I suppose we should pay to visit purely for exploratory purposes. Of course. Of course. Let's go have sex, Sarah, right now. I've heard that Benjamin Bayou has a private. Hey. That's nothing. 
Um, Not at all. So long. Just double checking something. Have things for you. I mean, a lot of people forget that he was also pretty good in uh, Jade Empire, for example. We didn't know you were coming in. It's all right. I just need to have a short chat with my counterpart. Is she in today? Yes. Uh, allow me to bust you in, sir. He played the Emperor Lisa. in Jade Empire. Shall we continue from last time? The luxury cruise line market is completely outside of our core competencies. Investing into it is a mistake. No, I'm here about... Wait a minute, a mistake. Our ship designers are the best in the settled systems. They design personal craft and military ships, Walter. Large-scale accommodations and hospitality is a completely different beast. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here I am, arguing with my partner. <laughs> and you're just standing right here. Issa Eklund, the hyphenated Eklund in our glorious company's branding. Charmed. I envy you and your partner's success. Oh, aren't you lovely? Walter, wherever did you meet your new friend? I'm jealous. A colleague from Constellation. Ah, yes. The daring explorers my partner is so infatuated with. <laughs> you should hear him reciting that speech. <clears throat> There's no need to go into that. <laughs> Oh, my heart skips a beat when he does it. Really, it does. Such passion. If he talked to the board that way, I wouldn't need to placate them so much. Here's one for you. How many of you recognize that he was Andrew Ryan in Bioshock? I know. It's my favorite hobby. Now, why are you here, my dear? The board meeting isn't for a while, and our vacations aren't coming up either. Yeah, that's Armin Shimmerman. He's Andrew Ryan in Bioshock. Here's another one of my personal favorites. He's Narud from StarCraft II. He plays a lot of people in WoW. I, I can't list all of those. Um... He is, of course, the voice of Dr. Nefarious. I'm sure several of you knew that one. That's from Ratchet and Clank. He does a bunch of voices in Mass Effect. All kinds of stuff there, too. <laughs> yeah, no, Armin Shimmerman is is all over the place. He, and again, he has, he's one of those actors with range, so most of the time you don't even recognize that it's him. It's the discretionary fund, Issa. I need all of it. Ugh. Oh, this wouldn't have anything to do with that meeting you've set up at the Astro Lounge, would it? I never said that. Did you have an agent hack into my files again? Only after you had one hack into mine. Tell me, can mutual distrust lead to a point where it's actually the same as mutual trust? Hmm. I mean, that's that's how I send my love, is with freelance operatives. Oh, don't mind the two of us. Challenging each other intellectually is a cornerstone of our relationship. Now, I must point out the obvious. The Astral Lounge. Hmm? It's a remarkably insecure location. That was the point. Neutral territory in the open. With no leverage. Oh, you must let me help. It's been too long. I have this all taken care of. Some investigation into the cellar. What's motivating them? Then, some preliminary casing of the Astral Lounge for security flaws. Give you the advantage if things go wrong. Bribe a few bouncers, alter the codes on the doors. Yes, exactly. Investigate cellar, case the lounge. Got it. I hate being selfish. But I would like some time with my husband. We need to go through the fund authorizations anyway. James Newell is the broker who knows our seller. 
He'll be able to help you find out more about them. And it shouldn't be hard to find the Astral Lounge. Here, let me at least give you some operation funds since I won't be joining you. Meet me back here. Yeah, I'm going to be present for the negotiation. I'm not leaving you to the Neon Sharks, I promise. Yeah, no, like I said, some actors are really, really good actors, but you can always tell it's them. Some actors are really, really good actors, and they have range. Shimmerman's a range actor. Picked up something you might be interested in. Troy Baker is a good example of a range actor. There are plenty of times where you'll hear Troy Baker and you, you do not know it's him. The syndicate's been pretty bold lately. Yeah, Jennifer Hale, by contrast, is a good voice actress, but you can tell it's her from a mile away. This place is insane! Yes, what? Yeah, you're new here, aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Sure, yeah. Hope to see you again. This bar sucks. This is headache inducing. I've seen bars like this in real life, and I would not want to go to this one. Um, and yeah, actually, Boo Boo for you. Love the name. I love the name. Uh, is exactly right. Troy Baker has great range, and they never let him use it. There's another voice actor who has the exact same problem. Steve Blum. And every time I say that, people look at me weird, but it's true. Steve Blum has great range. But every time you hear Blum, he's doing the dirt. I, I can't do it right now because of my throat. But he's doing that grisly voice, right? You can always tell when it's the grisly Blum voice. And everyone hires him to do the grisly Blum voice. But every now and again, he's allowed to actually act and you, you never even know it's him. Anyways. Yeah, you're new here, aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more... So is it illegal or not? Not at the Astral Lounge, my friend. In fact, this is the only place authorized to sell Aurora by order of Administrator Bayou himself. And once you buy it, you can use it anywhere in the Neon that you'd like. Well, except the spaceport, of course. Yeah, I don't do drugs. Oh, no, 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 no. Drugs are for street gangs and junkies. Aurora is on an entirely different level. I like to call it an exquisitely crafted transcendent experience. <laughs> Only problem is that won't fit on the package. Here, take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie. The Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it. Can you really put a price on pleasure? Yes. What can you tell me about Bayou? Oh, Ben and I are good friends. <laughs> he personally gave me the job here at the Astral Lounge. Oh, he's a good man. Cares a lot about the citizens of Neon, making sure they're all employed and well taken care of. A real humanitarian. Right. Um, Matt Mercer is another one who's a good actor, and he is, uh, but pretty distinct, usually. Uh, by the way, Ray Chase, another good example. Like, great actor, but you can always tell it's him. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That's Borealis, only 19 years old, and yet she produces some of the most heart-pounding, trippiest electronic music you've ever heard. I don't know where she gets her inspiration, but I'm betting all that free Aurora she gets has something to do with it. Anything on the menu you recommend? That depends on if you're hungry or thirsty. Uh, of course, of course. Um, can I look at the menu? Of course. Take your time. Okay. So I'm having a meeting here later. The Astro Lounge is one of the safest places in all of Neon. Security is handpicked from the finest officers in the city. Sandy to control the doors to prevent someone from walking out. 
I'm afraid that would be a serious fire hazard. And I think it's only fair to warn you that the network security on our doors is state of the art. Hmm. What about security being on my side if someone tries to kill me? Then I would say you'd be interested in the Astral Lounge VIP package. For a reasonable fee, our security can be your security. Sure. Excellent. We do hope your meeting goes to your satisfaction. Cool. Come back soon. Excuse me. Seth MacFarlane's hard for me to gauge because I so rarely see Seth MacFarlane actually do any kind of serious or uh, voice acting. He's usually doing comedic work, right? That's strange. He's a decent. He's got good comedic uh, timing and presentation, but like as far as anything else. Mm. Yes, he's also the one who bankrolled uh, the recent Cosmo. And um, the the new Star Trek show. I can't think of the name. Hill for a cup of coffee right about now. Huge, uh, huge sci-fi geek. Orville, thank you. Hell, I liked his Cosmo. Although, I shouldn't say his, but you know, whatever. Orville's a weird mixed bag. But no less interesting for that. I admit it's very much not my thing because I hate his style of humor. But whenever it's not trying to be funny, Orville's pretty legit. Kind of information you can get off of there. Sure thanks, Sarah. Yep, state of the art controls. No lies detected. Hey there. But no, despite my disdain for his humor style, I have to admit, I actually have a lot of um I have a lot of respect for Seth MacFarlane. He's been going out of his way to do the best he can with the resources and influence he has in Hollywood for a very long time. And that's actually kind of rare. Another day. Don't go causing trouble. Interesting. We have this district certainly provides excellent for the region's influence has spread from their tower and out Welcome into the city. Welcome to Newell's. If you're looking for any specific goods, Rosa and I guarantee we'll beat Sieghart's lousy selection every time. I'm sorry. Who's this Sieghart's place? Oh, I don't have a problem with his place. My problem is Sieghart himself. That man has absolutely no respect for the business community on Neon. He skips merchant meetings and refuses to participate in any of our group buys. Worst of all, he pays off Neon security to keep his place safe. How do you keep your place safe? By standing up to the lowlifes who come in here expecting me to just hand over all of my money. I refuse to be run out of business or be forced to pay protection. Okay. Yeah, sure. If all you care about is yourself. Every payment Seagirt makes validates Neon Security's corruption. 
He's setting a bad precedent that many merchants are forced to follow. Yeah, I, I know that. Sorry. I know I can get a little intense about these things. If you'll forgive the outburst and have... Yeah, um... You set up a meeting with Walter Stroud recently? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. These credits say you did. Had a freelancer trail the seller back to his place. Sleep crate one. I had to chase more zone heads out of here today. Quite a bit, Trihexia. Uh, I don't remember the exact number. Please forgive me. It's been a while since I've looked into it. But I remember McFarlane was trying to get a new Star Trek show off the ground for years. And years. And years. And pretty much finally just gave up and said, screw it. I'm making my own freaking show. And even then, the only way he got it greenlit was because he it was he agreed to go ahead and have the trademark McFarlane humor into it. Which is one of the reasons why the early Orville stuff is some of the worst stuff of the show. It's because it was the stuff it was mandated for him to do. Hi, Panka. Hello, Desperado. I'm really tired of this minigame. I'm sorry. I, I know you hate it when I'm, I'm negative. I'm already at the point where you're just beating me like a baby seal. I don't know what you want from me. Where did you learn to pick up? You know what? On second thought, I don't want to know. Okay, at least if the robot learns. July will know by the size of their nose. Oh my god, get out of the way. <sighs> Good afternoon, Evo. How is your day going? <sighs> Apparently I was going the wrong way anyways. So I was all a waste of everything. If I have to eat fish for dinner one more... I'm so sorry, it me, Jonakai. I recommend watching anybody else to play this game right now. Anybody else. I mean, I'm a crap streamer to begin with, but also, as you can probably tell, my voice is slowly giving out. You know, from being sick. Yeah, we're reviewing the game, honestly. Have things for you. I missed you too. You're still so tense. Normally, once we're alone, your shoulders relax. They're taut. Yeah, hey, let's, let's save over this again, uh, real quick. We're on to something remarkable. Maybe what I've always dreamed of. I can tell. I can see your mind racing. I haven't even stopped to ask you how you are doing. I'm fine. The board complains, I assure them. There's the occasional assassination attempt. So, you don't need anything from me, then? I don't. Am I just some useless stargazer? You would have been better off marrying a hope or a tie, or someone who could be with you at every meeting. Oh, don't go on about that again. Needing you isn't the same as wanting you. And I'd much rather want my partner than need them. Less complicated. I know Constellation seems to take up so much of my time. But I never stop thinking of you. Wondering what maneuvering you're doing to take over the company and drive me out. It's how I show my love. Oh, I doubt it, Ocean Gaming. DMC2 is legendarily bad. Is everything ready? Yeah, Teller's pretty desperate. Excellent. Good work. Let's head to the Astral Lounge. Goodbye, my dear. See you at the next board meeting? Oh, 
I'll be keeping an eye on this little operation. Just in case. Good luck, all of you. Hey, Evo, by the way, check this out, check this out. You've played Skyrim, right? Here's our latest shout power. Such power. It's incredible. You know me, Sister? You are so lucky. Just... I have something for you when you have a moment. And yeah, actually... There's a lot of asterisks when it comes to how well the game sold. Um, I actually did a whole discussion of this earlier, so here's the really, really quick version. Usually when a game sells well, it's the first thing the company parrots everywhere. Marketing, right? Oh my god, the game sold super well. 10 billion units moved, blah, 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 blah. They haven't been doing that. And the only real reason to not ch ch trumpet how much this game's selling well is if it didn't. So, all right, we're here. Now, I don't know what the seller looks like, but they'll have a security briefcase with them, larger than normal, big enough to hold the artifact. Appreciate your ocean gaming. You split up. The code phrase to identify yourself as the buyer is Ramsey and Travers. Got it. Scientists who discovered neon gas? Are they? <laughs> Anyways. Code phrases? My goodness, Walter. I think you're taking this espionage business a little too seriously. Remember, Ramsey and Travers. We'll meet back near the elevator. Okay. One last save. And I agree with you, meme cartoon rap. Because yeah, Nier Automata, a game that's... Let, let me be clear. I didn't enjoy Nier Automata personally, but Nier Automata is a much better game than this crap. And yeah, that took way too long to reach actual... Uh, like a really good seven-digit range in terms of uh, units moved. Ugh. Fun. Nier Automata also scored well. Probably because it's a good friggin' game. Me not like I've said this before, me not liking a game probably hurts the score, but it doesn't actually drag the score all that much down. There are plenty of games I do not enjoy that score quite well. Um, oh, man. I'm oh, I love how I can barely see and I'm trying to like see something based on just I, I, I can't even I can't even word. I can't even word. Let's try this again. The game is saying, hey, no quest objectives for this. You have to identify someone based on a visual cue, and that's doing that in this nonsense. Also true, Colgram. Very true. Is it you? This Aurora stuff? It's blowing my mind. <laughs> uh, now, you can also argue for positives. Uh, all right. Sorry, I guess you just said that. But the uh, point is, you can, you can pull a game up. Oh god, that's right. Let me just shine my flashlight on people's faces here. Hello! Hello! Hello. Where is the thing I am looking for? Hell yeah! This is awesome! Well, it wasn't... I, must... I completely missed it. Where was it? Where was it? Nope, not that guy. The uh, music is amazing. I'm guessing the flashlight actually heard it because I didn't see anything. Ah, oh, there it is. Jesus Christ! Yeah, no, I didn't see that at all. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy drinking? I'm with Ramsey and Travers. Oh really? I heard you all have a meeting in a few minutes, don't you? In one of those fancy VIP lounges. Speaking of which, I gotta get going myself. Excuse me. Of course. Just pull up my uh, flesh melter gun here. No reason. I just saw our cellar walk by. Good job. Let's do it. 
Now, before we head in there, let me go over the ground rules. He'll ask for twice what we agreed on. That's normal. He'll probably try to walk out. That's normal, too. Don't worry about the amount we actually settle on. The Stroud Eklund Discretionary Fund is just a chip to you and me. Our goal is to get him to accept that chip in exchange for the artifact. Anything goes as long as it's in our hands, and we're not dead. How does that sound? Close the deal. Get the arc back. Keep my weapon, my flesh melter gun, ready for this. Let's just try it my way first, hmm? Remember that man is selling the artifact for a reason. He might be nefarious, but he might just be desperate. If everyone walks away with what they want, I'll call it a success. Okay. And yes, this is the club where our parents were wanting to do drugs. You can do it. There you go. There you go. Good boy. How you liking that laser gun? Pew, pew. Would you like a demonstration? So you, Stroud, you look different in person. Our public relations always. Why can't I move? Doing some touch-ups for the official photos. Embarrassing, really. Your security here going to stand or sit for this little meeting, making me nervous. Like, I'm sorry, it is always a bad sign when they literally take control away from the player in one of these things. 100% of the time, it's a bad thing. I'll sit, no sense making anyone feel uncomfortable. So polite, almost makes me forget what planet I'm on. Okay, we're okay. Oh, thank God. Oh, God, I was worried there. Don't mind me being in my full body armor. Am I to assume that briefcase has our item of interest? Yeah, here it is. Well, look at that. One of a kind, and I know you want it. I have the amount we agreed on. Uh-uh. Things have changed. I want double. Now, how am I supposed to do that? I don't know, but your security here seems to have some fancy gear. Why don't they chip in? I... Okay, okay. I, I kind of like all these options, actually. I've got a darn. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk. Be reasonable. Not my problem. It is if you leave empty-handed. We came here in good faith. Now honor our previous agreement. You either figure out a way to give me what I want, or I walk out of here right now. Yeah, we saved. You know what? I'm gonna just try to grab the artifact. You trying to steal from me? Yeah. I'm gonna signal the fact that I'm Neon Security. You walk away or I have security gun you down. As you can see, we're in control. Take advantage of our generosity. Take the money. All right. Okay. It's all yours. Hope I never see any of you people ever again. I noticed attack was an option there too. This couldn't have gone better. Well done. Some high pressure tactics, but we got what we were after. Time to go home. Run, boy! You're in possession of Slayton Aerospace property. Who are you? Ah. Slayton must have been the original owner. We don't need to do this. All's fair on Neon. Am I right? Hand over Mr. Slayton's property. Now. 
Security, we're being harassed here. Is there a problem here? Yes. This armed thug was trying to steal our belongings. I'm going to need you to back away from our VIPs. Now. Fine, but you can't stay in the Astral Lounge forever, Stroud. Nicholas Slayton's already got your number. Sending armed men into the Astral Lounge. Slayton must be serious about getting the artifact back. We'd better get off the planet quickly. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So we tried to take it, right? All right, that didn't work out great. Let's, let's, let's try another route here. For Javin's sake. Javin wants us to be playing Starfield as long as possible. Javin really wants my SSD to crash again. And for it to actually brick this time. Nothing like some Aurora to take the edge off. I used to be an actuary. Now let's yeah, so set up a safe here. So you use our public relations. Your security here. I'm standing. Flexing the muscles, or am I to assume that? Yeah, here it is. Well, look at one of a kind. I have the amount. Uh uh. Things have now. How am I supposed? I don't know. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna talk because last time we kind of cut off talking with action. So let's just talk this time. Be reasonable. Not my problem. It is if you leave it. You either figure out a way. Don't be rash. We can make this work. I'm not hearing here's the money. I'm on a tight timetable. And we would have wrapped up already if you hadn't gotten greedy. Our original offer stands. Now what's it going to be? Uh, I... <laughs> you might have wanted war more, but this is still a good deal. Fine. This thing is all yours. Okay, that was easy. Well so that was just talk. Okay, so hang on, hang on. So we've tried grabbing, we've tried talking. There's only one other option. The one I want to do the most. So you, Stra, our public relations, your security here. So polite. Am I to assume that? Yeah. Well, I don't know, you know. I have the amount we agreed on. Uh-uh. Now, how am I su I don't know. I'm gonna... Trigger the door to close. What the? Security! We have what we need. You are expendable! So that's the play, huh? No. No, it's not. We're not. We're not killing anyone. Here, your money. And we never want to see or hear from you again. Hmm. Fine. He can live. Thank you. All right. It's all yours. Just tell your friend not to shoot me in the back on the way out. It's not going to happen. Now get out of here. We're not going to talk about what just happened. It's over, and we won. That's all that matters. But this is murder! You're on your own! Didn't shoot him in the back. Uh, I have something I really need to talk to you about. There you are. I'm taking you down. Ah! Ah, shit. Oh, wow, they're essential. All right, you know what? You know what? I, I can't abide that. We can't kill the cleaning bot. Come on.
we just okay so we've actually talked about this before anytime the quest objective doesn't say go to the turn in place it says leave the room that's a bad sign so i'm gonna pull my gun out This game has actually already pulled this before in the MSQ, by the way. Uh, earlier when we were in the mine, it was like, leave the mine, not go back to town. And it's like, yeah, okay. Asa, something's gone wrong, hasn't it? Slayton has put a bounty on your heads. He's greased a few palms. Your ship's been impounded at the spaceport. There goes our way out. All right, who's Slayton? The CEO of Slayton Aerospace. They're a systems manufacturer. Engines, thrusters. So. How do I get him off my back? Can I kill him? Is that a thing? Agreed. Have a talk with the man himself. Slayton Aerospace has offices here in the Trade Tower. If Nicholas is moving this quickly, he must be there or close by. Let's head to their lobby, shall we? See if we can make an appointment. Okay. Uh, worse, Evo, but I'm trying very, very hard. Like, I'm focusing. Because everyone says this is either the best or worst quest of the game. And that means I need to walk in as neutrally as possible to come up with my own opinion. You didn't hear this from me, but those ecliptic mercenaries... Yeah, that's... I'm not super impressed with this. There's something I'd like to discuss. Yeah, sure, what's up? Yeah, what is it? Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like raw energy was coursing through your veins? Yeah. Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Okay. You never mentioned your predecessor to me before. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just started flooding back. Right. I just, uh... I feel like we're making good memories all on our own. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protégé. Maybe she was just trying to keep an eye on the rook. <laughs> now that you mention it, you're probably right. Either way, we logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. Honestly... It wasn't so much what Aja and I discovered in our travels. It was the journey that was memorable. I can relate to that. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of... Cozy isolation, the best way to really get to know someone. Cozy isolation. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space. Nothing but light years of black around you. Stroud's right there. Some people find that terrifying. I find it comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. Right. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. Uh, is she dead? No, she retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. 
just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, <laughs> that's what intrigues me about you. Blurred. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. Evo, is this you? About the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I, I, I have to go. Okay. Well, take your time. So... <clears throat> yeah, fair enough, Colgrim. Uh, how long is an average Starfield, play Starfield playthrough? Depends on how much of the game you engage in. But if you're in at least dipping your toes into all the content a little bit, I'd say about 80 hours. You have a question? You can chat with the receptionist all you want. Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. Can I help you? Yes, I need to make an appointment. I'm afraid Mr. Slayton is a very busy man. Yes, that's why this is a persuade check. No. Nice try. Okay, mind control. You're starting to make a lot of... Maybe I could squeeze you in. Let... Oh, I think we can make an exception in your case. Mr. Slayton will see you. Just right. use the elevator. Look, I didn't feel like reloading the save, okay? And yes, I really did just use the mind control. That's not actually a joke. Mm, yes, I have Evo strength. <laughs> this clearly isn't the executive level. He's on to us. Walter, uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. A bold move, but one easily counted. Oh, we're trapped. Hello, Walter, dear, are you there? Issa? Took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slayton's security consultants. They've patched me in. All right, we've got her out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay? Uh, sure. No, I'm an elevator person now. I'm going to build my kingdom in here. Well, if my wife and I could gallantly offer your majesty a rescue from certain death, let's go. Doors will open in three, two, one. Slayton's guards and employees are all over. Be careful. Okay. Why is the music not playing? system to slip around unnoticed. There's a cover just to the right of the elevator you came in on. Yep, it's a very difficult to see, obfuscated vent. You you would never see it if you weren't looking right for it. Not that I'm aware of, Blade to all, other than the obvious fact that I am mind controlling people. That's the elevator you came in on. Jump right across the top of it and keep going to the end. To be blunt, I'm using it because the Persuade game sucks. All the way to the end, past so, the fork. You know. There's a vent above you. Just climb up. The room below you is clear. Drop down. This is hopeless. Time out. You, you're joking. You're joking. So either they heard the, the gunshot, because remember, that's what it sounds like, or, and this is actually what I think happened. Wait. This clearly isn't the executive level. He's I, to us. Walter, uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. Or the slugs are part of the same faction flag as the NPCs in the building. Which is what I assumed, because I've seen that happen before in a BRPG. A bold move, but one easily counted. Oh, we're trapped. Hello, Walter, dear, are you there? Issa? 
took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slade's... That's a good point, Javan. These are not mutually exclusive. All right. We've got our out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay? Cool. I'm aware of the irony of me continuing to say it'll be easy. But it'll be easy. Doors will open in three, two, one. Slayton's guards and employees are all over. Be careful. Okay. You'll want to use the vent system to slip around unnoticed. There's a cover just to the right of the elevator you came in on. That's the elevator you came in on. Jump right across the top of it and keep going to the end. Drop down and follow the conduit all the way to the end, past the fork. There's a vent above you. Just climb up. The room below you is clear. Drop down. Looks like it was the sound in this case. I was curious. There's a vent above you. Just climb up. The room below you is clear. Drop down. And stop. One of the doors leads you right into the open. I'm unlocking a safe route. Opening the door on your right. Go now. Head left, but don't go through the door at the end yet. There's a robot stalking the hall. Wait. It's walking down the hall. Go now, straight across to the door. Keep going all the way to the end. Wait, there's people in the room up ahead. Closing the shutters. straight across to the maintenance door next to the security gate. Let me just get that for you. You know the routine. Up the vent. It's a short one, I promise. Why is there no music for this section? This is weird. Almost there. What is all this junk? Ugh. There's the door. It should take you outside. Outside? You expect us to climb up the trade tower? When you have a moment. Well. I guess, after you. Hmm? Until later. <clears throat> Shh. I don't think we're alone. <laughs> it's going down! Alright, so. Let's see if Sarah can kill anything without my help. I'll be right back.
It appears she's not doing well without me. You're kidding, Jovan. That's honestly pretty pathetic, even by BRPG companion standards. say in outer worlds I remember them being useful. Hell's bells and Mass Effect 2 companions are useful, at least if for the ammo abilities. Coming in just behind the executive elevators. I'll call the one on the far end and you can walk right over the top. You know, it's moments like this that really makes Neon the best place to do business. You steal what's mine. I trap you in the city. You infiltrate my office. I lock it down. Where else can you match wits for the highest stakes but here? <laughs> Are you enjoying this? Aren't you? In the back of your mind, through the tunnel vision of adrenaline, there's a part of you that belongs here. It happens to all of us. You're about to die. Ah, it seems you have chosen more violence. Very well. Maybe... Maybe when I said, you're about to die, I wasn't being clear about this. Hello. I'm gonna save you for last, just so you know. Is that everyone? That appears to be everyone. Hi! Wow, that's some really impressive business armor there. Apparently more bodyguards somewhere. Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry. Okay, can, can we go now? There is, it's really small, Cauldron, but it is there. Yeah, no, sorry, there is a clear indicator when they have multiple health bars. Uh, I mean, the adoring fan is, 100%. What was 
Yeah, okay, apparently that wasn't a murder or something, so. No option to romance the adoring fan that I saw, sadly. Although at that point, that's almost self-cessed. Maybe Metacist? Hmm. Private sector. For advanced teller machines. Gal banking. We're using the secret techniques of ancient Earth. Speak with me only if you have what it takes to do. You know, I just realized. I vowed to burn through quests as fast as possible after our hardware scare. Interstellar shipping rates aren't that bad. Thus far, we have managed to go through one and a half quests since I made that vow of 14. The track is always fun. Ready to make your That's why I said one and a half. We're still at a half. My mother wanted me to be a doctor. Like the other quest uh, wasn't nearly as bad as this, admittedly. varies. The final quest of the uh, the reusion was about an hour and a half. People compare that that to the goblin camp. Did, did they do the goblin camp? Gold-blooded murder was a lie told myself I'd never cross. Do you really think we did the right thing back there? Yeah. I can't argue with that. I'm just used to costs only being measured in money whenever I can help it. Wrong. Preserving life at all costs. That's what matters. That's who we are as Constellation and as human beings. Well, I may not agree with every outcome. But you did everything to accomplish our goals and more. I don't often get a chance to work in the field. So, thank you. I love the giant cargo container just clamped onto the back of the ship there. Well, it was aggressively linear, offered a brief option of choice. You hold something you have no right to. My people have killed for this. But I will offer you one chance to hand over the artifact and turn away from this path. Oh, that's not any type of ship I recognize. What the hell is that thing? You see much. But our ship is created from a power beyond your understanding. Its semblance to your own vessels only aids us in masking our presence. We are the Starborn, and you are unworthy to possess the artifacts. Tell us, please. What are the artifacts? What are they for? Did you make them? What gives you more right to them? 
Answering your questions is exactly what we cannot allow. Abandon your thirst for knowledge, or drown in it. I mean, at least tell us about who you are. The more you understand, the more damage you will do. How could just knowing what you are be dangerous? Our distance from you is the whole point. We interfere now because we must. I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the scans. The energy output from that ship is far above the normal range. If we spin up the grab drive now, we have a chance. Well, let's get out of here. We'll get through this. Hold on. Or I could just shoot him, you know. Pretty sure I could take him in a fight. As it happens, I am correct. How about you? But I've never heard of these stars. Speculation part of my brain is an overdrive. We need to regroup at the lodge immediately. Tell Noel to analyze the data off the ship's sensors. <laughs> Everyone's going to want to weigh in on this. Did you know I used to have an office near the top of Mast? Hmm. How far the mighty have fallen, eh? That just makes me love you all the more. Much as I'm eager to explore the universe, there's nothing quite like the feeling of returning home. How is Neon? Are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I'll start transferring the data over now. Let me just bring it up on here at the table. Is that... Is that a prototype? No, that material isn't anything we... What the... Everyone, come take a look at this. Yeah, the N NVME does, built in. Crimson Fleet. Secret military tech, maybe? Hmm, no United Colonies Admiral approved that starship design. They call themselves the Starborn. Demanded we hand over the artifact. Like we were children, playing with their parents' things. What do people know? Any offshoot groups go by that name? Not in any corner of the settled systems I've seen. Maybe a distant human colony finally popping its head up? Huh. Another house for room? I very much doubt that. We ignoring the obvious here? A heretofore unknown group who just happens to know about the artifacts. I'm just gonna say it. Intelligent alien life or extra dimensional beings. The original creators from the furthest fringes of space. Or beyond even that. Is the metaphor of avenging angels coming down to keep humanity from forbidden knowledge not apt here? So, we have a lot of theories, but nothing concrete. Except that they're after the artifacts, and they're willing to take them by force. And they're chumps in a fight. Eh. Or what Walter said. They were acting like a parent. Worried their children are playing with something they don't understand. So, they're strong-arming us for our own good? That doesn't sound very divinely benevolent to me. Noel, start analyzing all the data from the ship sensors. The gravitational wave they caused, sweet. scans of their weapons, shields, we everything. Talk? We're in the dark. We need to learn anything about them we can. Including some way to fight them, if necessary. Until then, we stay the course. Collect the artifacts. It's even more important now 
that an intelligence we don't know or understand is looking for them. A agreed? Why is this a dial option? All we can do is be more cautious, but we are not stopping. This could end up being a race we don't want to lose. Vladimir, has the eye picked up anything new? Some glints of shine in the dark. Ready to hand them out as soon as you please. All right. Good luck, everyone. And be careful out there. So, whoever was asking about my opinion on that quest, I think a net neutral, excuse me, a flat neutral is the best option. I don't think it did anything particularly good or bad gameplay-wise. I don't think it did anything particularly good or bad story-wise. At least for the majority of the quest. Right up until we left the planet. The moment we left the planet. I'm hesitant to judge that as badly as it probably deserves to yet. But let's just say that none of that sounds like good storytelling to me. Because, yeah, this is now a new quest at this point. We have not yet had a moment to talk about what happened to you at that place. T temple? I am not sure what to call it. In all my time amongst the stars, I have never heard of such a thing. What do you think that place was? Uh, some place very beautiful. Just like your lips. And it seems fitting that you were the one to discover it. Certainly it is too soon to speculate about who built it, but... How can we not? After what you experienced, do you have any insights? Honestly, no. It is hard to argue, but the implications... I am sorry. After what you have been through, I should be asking about you. Are you alright? Have you felt any side effects? I am super powerful. Yes, I meant apart from that. I am still trying to comprehend that on its own. The artifacts, that temple, this new ability you have acquired, clearly they are all connected. This is all so much bigger than we realized. How is this big? Okay. You are right. Now we have even greater reason to press forward, to learn more about what is at work here. Hey, good to see you. So I've analyzed a lot of Star Trek in my I life. Know everyone's excited by the artifacts. Uh -oh. But we need to be as objective. And what this feels like. So I, I want to give my prediction. Um, the Starborn are. Higher plane of beings, here to protect us against the ills of humanity, the awful awfulness that we do to each other. It's okay, we will be able to convince them with the rightness of our Shatner speech. I mean, I mean our, 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 our just cause of being cool, maybe love, I don't know, something like that. But for real, give me a second. Ah, it's like right out of reach. There it is. Yeah. The strongest vibe I've been getting overall from the whole game is they're going for something narratively that I am not going to enjoy. Uh, what's the name of that terrible movie? Contact, I want to say. Is that the one? Hang on, hang on. Let me look that up really quick. It is Contact. Yeah, Jodie Foster, that's the one. No spoilers, but Contact is the vibe I've been getting. I've never liked that when fiction, when sci-fi pulls that particular thing. It's not as bad as it can get, but it's very... It feel that that kind of stuff feels like it's trying to be uplifting and instead comes across as (sighs) 
demeaning. Yeah, exactly, Javan. Patronizing is a good word. Patronizing is another good word. I'll be right back. Now, I know I'm going to oust myself as being terrible and awful, and everyone's going to hate me forever for this. But I don't like it when fiction in general gets all... high-minded. I don't like it when it gets, you know, new dimensions and new realities and beyond the realm and limits of human imagination and concepts... And it's like, I've never enjoyed that. I like, yeah, abst too abstract. It's a good word. I don't like it when fiction gets too abstract. It doesn't have to be at ground level, but I prefer something I can actually sink my teeth into, you know? Yes, Interstellar did this as well, which is funny, because Interstellar was a very grounded story, until it wasn't. So yeah, this is really common in sci-fi. And I, if I'm being honest... I'm predicting that partially because this is really common in sci-fi, and this is Bethesda's writers. But the second reason, we do know that at least some of the design documents that went into Starfield were from a pitch from Todd Howard to make a Star Trek game. Negative effects. Spend so much time looking at the scans, I can see star systems orbiting in my I hope head. You are satisfied with the corners available to you. Yeah, no, exactly, Samurai. If you get too abstract, by the way, hi, Kalibo. If you get too abstract, it's just, huh? You. Thank you for not spoiling it, dude. It's good to be on the boat. The lodge gets stuffy sometimes. You had a hell of a shake getting bullied in the void. Starborn sure know how to make an entrance. Ready to head back out there? The Eye can help you find the artifacts, but I'm afraid she's blind to our new competitor. Yeah, let's do it. Double check the safety and locks wherever you go, okay? Exploration's dangerous, even without some nefarious group trying to kill you. So... I said trying, not succeeding, Silver Galax. There's a difference. I have been? Here's a question. For those of you who have not played this game or are not aware of the narrative of the game, what would be the worst possible outcome here? Like, what would be the story twist here that would just make you go, ugh? Like, let's establish a floor, right? What is what is base level? You're all good, and Diddy. It's all good. So I've been thinking about that question myself, because I find, not not to be insulting, I don't need to invent reasons to insult this game, but one of the things that I do, uh, I find to be useful when analyzing a work is to try and establish, like, the, 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 the base, the bedrock, right? How bad can bad, 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 bad get, at least, at least for you, right? So, what is the worst possible thing that they could be doing here with this Starborn artifacty thing. I think for me, the worst thing they could do personally is if this is 
uh, multiple timelines, alternate versions of us kind of a thing, right? And each Starborn is actually just someone who is from another universe or from another galaxy or whatever. And they're policing the various timelines to make sure that humanity's progress goes in a certain way, um, similar to how a lot of fiction has done that exact same concept before. I think that would probably be the floor for me, because that would just... Yeah, you know I don't like multiverse st stories in general. <coughs> and as I already mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the uh, aliens are here for our own good thing. Having it be other versions of us, honestly, just kind of makes that even worse. Like, I could just picture a conversation where we talk to us, right, ourselves. And our other us is like... Their other, other us is like, you don't understand... This is the only way for humanity to be able to grow up. You have to let us, you know, ease you into space. You cannot be trusted with your own development. And you have to, like, argue with yourself, you know? I, I can just see that. What, uh... Where's the... Door? Yeah, we gotta listen to our parents, our parent aliens, which is our alternate dimensional selves. Wait, what was that? Nothing. You heard nothing ever again. Any questions? Go, go! I'll cover you. Thank you for the pits, Kuibo. Yeah, always press F. You're right. I should do that. Um, you probably don't know this, Kuibo, but I have a system where you could put that towards uh, a future stream if you'd like to. You don't have to, of course. But if there's uh, one of the games on the on the list that you'd like to see streamed in the future, please let me know. See you around, Devo. Enjoy shower. Hey, Valerian. How is your day going? I am still in recovery, as my voice is probably giving away. Is this the room? We're on the third quest now, Yura. Good call, Commotion Gaming. I'm glad you're liking it. That is my gerb. This is the game's most basic weapon, which I happen to have a specific build, which turns it into a death laser. I mean, yeah, I do more damage with it, but what I really do is every time I hit someone with it, it has a chance to do a stacking burning dot. Emphasis on the stacking. So you see them ignite there. That's what's actually doing the damage. AC Valhalla, you got it. Now, as it happens, you can actually pick three games. Don't worry, all three games get the full donation. That's that's how that method works. Plural voting, if you're familiar with it. But I will jot that down for AC Valhalla. I haven't played it yet. Oh yeah, high rate of fire, and uh, I ignite things when I shoot them. Might as well take what we can. So they 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 don't live very long. I knew I'd find you. Gonna take you down. Oh, also, this weapon has infinite ammo, so I could just disengage with the ammo mechanic for the rest of the game. Which, let me tell you, is a huge relief. Ah. 
I mean, Valhalla is a gigantic game. I liked Origins best, personally. But we'll see. I haven't reviewed them yet. Yes, we are in the MSQ, Dinka. Oh my god. Right, right, right. Lead me. Give me give me a path, please. How do I go forth? There goes my shear. What the heck? Well, so far it's a total nothing burger. We only had two flirt options. I admit, I wish I'd known about that earlier, or, or remembered it earlier, might be a better way to phrase that. Why do you exist? Just getting started. Uh, oh. uh, Try that on me. Uh, uh, Interesting death sounds. Not going to question it. Not going to question it. Everyone dies in their own ways. Some less dignified than others. Okay, let's me to ignore that. If we ignore that, we will. No, not my bed. No. I heard you with my infinite hearing. Uh, I was really quiet. You were very quiet. You're getting so good at stealth. Yeah. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I lost you. You're gone. You're gone. Where did she go? Where did she go? Where did she go? Where is she? There I am. Oh, you killed me. Oh, I'm back too late. No way, come back. Where did she go? Where did she hide from me? Ah, oh, well. I'm sure she'll never come out and startle me now. Boom! Ah! How did you startle me? You are so good at stealth. Interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah! <laughs> I have gained one quantum essence? What is a quantum <laughs> essence? How dare you boo me? Just for that. The tickle! The tickle! The tickle! Oh, you okay? You okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Here, I kept something for you while you were away. Do you remember this? All yours again. You can also wear it on your finger. Yes. And then boing it out, and then you're boing. Right here, 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 here. So, come on. So, hold on, put it on your finger, and then hold it with your thumb like this, right? Then do this. Here, you try. Put your finger, and then hold it with your thumb. Hold it. Oops. There you go. And now boing. See? See? Oh no, it's. Spinning. You can also do that. How did you make it spin? You're too smart. Yeah, the no, no escape. No escape. <laughs> I escaped from your mouth. You'll never escape. You'll never escape. No, you're so strong. No. <laughs> ah, where did she go? Oh my god, is it really, Javin? I mean, it probably is. You're it's probably magic. Asking. Wait, is it magic? Are you magic? Did you turn into magic? Hang on. So, so how do I, like, spend it? Why do you keep... Oh my god. Increases starborn power regeneration speed for 60 seconds. Okay, okay. It's not as bad as I thought. It's not as bad as I thought. Oh. And now, to tickle the quantum stealther. Wait, where'd she go? Where did she go? Where is she? I can't tickle her. No! No! 
<laughs> Tickles. <laughs> Wait, you dropped your horse. You dropped your horse. There you go. Horse. Well, what is it? It's in riding the year. Can I see? It's in my pocket. Oh my gosh, you have so many animals in your pocket. I got all of them. Are you a Pokemon master? Admit yeah. it. Admit it. No. Okay. These aren't from Pokemon. These aren't from Pokemon. Okay. Oh, all right. Can I just warp out of here, please? Mouse. Where's the mouse? Ooh, that's very cute. And delicious. Why not? Because they're not food. Oh, mice aren't food. Why don't people just tell me these things? Why didn't you tell me? Because I forgot because I forgot to tell you. Oh, okay. Well I'll let that go. So did you come down to tell me anything? A big bird. Why is that so big? Look at this. Baby bear, where are you? Where did you? Where are you hiding? Did you come down to tell me anything, baby bear? No. I'm waiting. I'm waiting very patiently. Oh God, Kara White Noise. That would actually be better than my idea. Or my fear, I guess I should say. Yes, Adster, this is uh, not the longest game I've ever played, but this is by far the most padded game I have ever played on this show. Not in general. I've, I've played MMOs from the 90s, but um, as, far as, as, as far as professionally, this is the most padded game I've ever covered. Send them back to the stars. Okay, well, let's go back to the stars. Hang on, we have to put this person on fire. Do you see this person? They're very, very cold, so we have to make sure that they are warm. Why do we have to put it on fire? Well, if we don't put them on fire, how are they going to be warm? They, they would just get a blanket. Oh, that's true. They could just get a blanket. I didn't even think about that. You're so smart. Okay, let's go pick this thing up here. Hug attack! Hug attack! Oh god, I'm being attacked! Ugh. Hug attack! Hug attack! Yeah, Persona 5R is a longer game than this, but not as packed. Hug. Hug. Oh god! Hug. Wait, don't step on my chips. Remove these. But now you can attack me. Or I'll step on you. Step, step, step. No, where did you go? I have never played Wild Vanilla on screen. Uh, Wild Vanilla didn't exist by the you time like I started streaming. I do. It's very pretty. I like the pink, too. Is that a flower? They see your flower hair. Nice. I like it. Now they can go all wonderful. Excellent. Soon we will have a unicorn army. I like unicorns. Wait. Would, wouldn't that be a good thing, then? Having a unicorn army? Yeah, but, but that's still it. But oh yeah, because... so can you explain to chat why we shouldn't conquer the world? Why because... shouldn't... Go ahead, go ahead. Because, pe because people will die. And that's bad? Yeah. I love you. Bad. I love you. you. And you don't want to die, right? Right, nobody does. That's silly. Yeah, it is. And I, and I am sillier. You are very yeah. silly. And I'm even scarier than that. How are you so silly? Look at me. Why are you so silly? I see you. I can see you in the, in the corner of my eye over there. Careful there. I am. <laughs> now, can you see me? You're being so... No, I can't see you. You're invisible. There's, there's no one there. I can't see anyone. Wait, where did you go? You were right here a second ago. Oh, okay. I guess I guess I'll just have to steal all her animals. <laughs> no. oh. <laughs> Here I am. Okay, okay. You win. I will not take your animals. I just have to steal all the animals. Ugh. Oh. I'm 
I'm stealing all the animals. I played. I mean, if I did play Wild Vanilla, Wild Vanilla is more uh, padded than this game, and it is legitimately. Although, I'm willing to bet Wild Vanilla would outscore this game. And that's pathetic, honestly. All right, let's do this. And I imagine my niece actually came down to tell me that it's dinner time. Did you? No. No, it's not dinner time? Oh, okay. It's well, magic time. It's magic time. And I will use my magic to destroy. When you have a moment. Wait, I don't want to destroy anything. What can I use my magic for, baby bear? Destroying the pillows. Destroying the pillows? But I like pillows. We should have a talk. When you have time, of course. I wanted to talk to you, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. The Starborn's technology is simply astonishing. It's just almost too much to process. She says I have to destroy everyone's pillows in the world except for hers. Yes, I suppose I am. But you can hardly blame me, can you? You do understand the significance of this encounter, don't you? This is humankind's first contact with what I believe is an alien race. A race with technology that could be far superior to our own. Oh, we could learn so much from them. I wouldn't say I was afraid. More like approaching the situation with caution. Can't be a coincidence that these Starborn suddenly appeared after your experience at that temple. We know they're here to lay claim to the artifacts, but what's their true motivation? What aren't they telling us? They're certainly hostile, but I don't think they're here to completely annihilate us, or they would have done so already. Damn. Oh, if only we knew more about the Starborn. What their species is like, where they're from, how they're able to speak our language. I feel like a cadet on my very first day aboard a spaceship. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions. They're time travelers. No, not time travelers. I don't think the science is there to support that theory. Their name alone, Starborn. There's some type of hidden meaning there. Something that feels very old. Perhaps even ancient. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you that Constellation intends to get to the bottom of this mystery. Exactly. We must use all of the tools at our disposal to learn more about the Starborn and their connection to the artifacts. I'm grateful you feel that way. And don't worry, I promise to be careful. You know, it's funny. When I was a little girl, I'd lay on the ground and stare up at the stars. I was absolutely convinced they held a secret. I'd remain there for hours in silence, eyes closed, listening, waiting for the secret to be whispered in my ear. This encounter with the Starborn is that moment to me. The stars are finally whispering, and I need to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Although I'm flattered that you think of me that way, there's a time and a place for that sort of talk. This is definitely not one of them. Well then, I've certainly wasted enough of your valuable time. Just do be careful if you cross paths with these Starborn in the future. I wouldn't want to lose one of the most valuable members of Constellation. Well, just because I have superpowers? Uh, I, I, I need to, I need to organize my bedroom. You'll never organize it. Um, I will. Okay. Because I got, and I, 
Jesus. So, yeah, we already made the joke that we are, they call us the Cosmo Keen. Starboard. Do, 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 um, to be clear, Lord Hermon, I stand by my statement that Wild Vanilla is padded, but actually in a way that has nothing to do with what you mentioned. I'm almost done with my homework. Okay, let me finish my sentence, okay? And I, and I have to Thank make the bed. bed. Go make the bed. Go make the bed. Quick, quick, quick. The biggest way Wild Vanilla was, was padded by far was travel time. Um, the amount of time it takes to get anywhere and interact with things, uh, getting back to your corpse, um having to go far grind and farm in order to get money in order to be able to afford things like a mount uh or having to just sit and literally not play the game as you're on a flight path that's the padding right there that's what i'm talking about um there's actually quite a few bits of seconds and minutes all over the place in wild vanilla and i would say it's actually probably one of the biggest differences between wild vanilla and Mal modern so while modern has you know sliced out almost all of those uh in terms of just the the little extra irritations. Uh, I mean, group loot by itself, right? I'm all done with my, my homework. Mm, you've got one last thing to do. You have to... Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I just had it. No. Um, I put it in the closet. Oh, you put it in the closet. Okay. Yeah, corpse walking. Oh, man. Do you remember the molten core run? Because I do. I've done that like 20,000 times in my career. But, but, to, but today is my magic ballerina class. Hey. Okay. Look at how far we've come. It's all becoming so overwhelming. The Starborn, the artifact visions, the music. Is it all worth it? Mateo, are you having a crisis of faith? You? What if the Starborn are right? What if our hunt for the artifacts is a fool's errand, doomed to failure and catastrophe? You think we're doing the wrong thing? We just want answers. Isn't that why we all joined in the first place? The noble quest of discovery? Don't do this. We're making history here. We'll deal with the Starborn. Together. When the universe presents us with a threat, we can't simply curl up into a ball. We need to stay in the fight. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shame either of you. Blame the workings of a worried mind. I just hope that this journey doesn't turn us into something that we wouldn't recognize from where we are now. Hate to interrupt, but I have a favor to ask. Lot of equipment on the eye has reached the span's end. If we're going to find more artifacts further out, we need work done. Got the nods and signs from Sarah and Walter for the materials, but I need hands. I will be happy to help you, Vladimir. Won't be going alone. Need more than just the you and I. Ask around. A few constellations are already on their way up. I may regret this, but there's something I'd like to ask you. Take note. Everyone here is worth learning from. Yes, even the kid. You okay after that ambush? And Not my first time in a hostile negotiation, as you well know. Admittedly, I usually know more about who I'm facing off against. I'm very interested in what Noel can learn from the scans. The technology on that ship was impressive, to say the least. If there's a chance, we could learn enough to duplicate some of it. I got to where I am by taking advantage of opportunities, no matter where I find them. Might as well make the most of this crazy situation. Oh, right. 
I was afraid you were going to bring that up again. Very well. Let's see if I embarrass myself or not. My colleagues, I venture out into the darkness of space once again. Many of you have expressed concern. At my age, you say, surely the risks are too great. Surely Sebastian Banks has earned a rest. Nonsense, I say. To go out into the unknown, to brave the possibility of never coming back, to ignite the spark of hope that humanity will find answers out there in the stars, that is all I have ever wanted. If this last expedition is my time, then I say I have been fortunate. I have been fortunate to leave surrounded by people who could not be more different from one another, but who share a common purpose. That, dare I say, I am fortunate my soul has a home it can always come back to. And that was the last thing Sebastian Banks ever said in the Lodge before he disappeared. And Constellation has been waiting for him to come home ever since. Until next time. Okay. Outer Worlds has some pretty bad issues. I don't want to overpraise it. Yeah, flawed gem. That's a good way to put that. Because, yeah, um... The, uh... Like I said, Outer Worlds had pretty... I'm not those people. Who am I? Don't tell me. What's it? What is it? What is it? What are you telling me? What are you telling me? Um, I'm dinner time. Okay, it's dinner time. Get ready quickly. Okay, I'm getting ready quickly. Uh, yeah, Outer Worlds was still a net positive. It's just, it had, it had, I don't want to overpraise it, it had some gameplay issues, and it would not let no, know when to let go of the joke. But other than that, it's a good game. I will say the first town is probably the best part of the game for me. Anyways, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're playing more of this game.